Hello. Um, this is Bobby from Ragged Poet. My second video after a long hiatus. <laughs> and this one is, I wanted to do this for a long time. Um, it's actually a response to a video tag about the fountain pen hobby. And it was started by Chris Sainz. Apologies, Chris, if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. And Chris has a channel, a YouTube channel, which is her name. I'll link it below anyway. And she's been, like me, she was into the thing years ago, then three or four years ago, she got back into it. And she's been doing these amazing ink reviews. She just does incredible, really gets into the nitty gritty of all the different inks and comparing them. And they're such fun. So I started following her and watching those videos and um, she has a real passion, which I love passion in everything. Um, and then I found she did this tag. I think she did it at Christmas, December time, but I wasn't in the space or I have a new, a brand new grandchild and I had a heavily pregnant daughter and then was not a good time to start. I'm out of all my family staying and it was my grandson and it then was definitely not a good time to start making videos again. So anyway, here I am today responding to Chris's tag, the fountain pen hobby tag. And I'll link to the original video below. So there's, I think, 12 questions that Chris has set and she's answered them herself as well in her video. And question number one is, do you have a favourite ink brand? Um, when someone asks you, do you have a favorite anything at that moment in time, I have a favorite something, but it changes. So I've got some of my favorite ink brands. I think one of my very favorite ones that I don't have many of, because it's hard to get in New Zealand and it's kind of expensive is Colorverse. And because they do amazing packaging and they have gorgeous names. So this is a, a, a this one here is a little a mini one, and this is a range called, I think it's the Everyday something Everyday Joy or has it got it in here? Colorize your universe, rainy day. No, it's called Everyday something. It probably said anyway. This one here is called Rainy Day, and I've also got Delicious Sleep. You can see that, and. Walk the dog. I think these are Joy in the Ordinary, I think the brand are called. And I'll just open it. I love their boxes, so I put the ink bottle back in the box when I open it. And um, hang on, I need to get something to open this box because I've, I've blocked it so it doesn't... And I think because we just had summer here and my ink stored in a place where there's a big window. So I keep it out of the, try and keep it out of the light because otherwise it evaporates. So yeah, so you get, this is the bottle. Their bottles are a gorgeous shape. Look at that, isn't it? Such a cute shape bottle. And you get this little tag. But everything's got amazing graphics on. The other brand that does these amazing graphics is um, Ferris Wheel Press, but isn't that, uh, that is one of my very favorite shape ink bottles ever. And it's also a beautiful color. And then you get all of the inside of the boxes got graphics. Here we go. And you even get every ink bottle, you get a little pack of stickers. I forgot about those. So I think I've got them upside down. Yeah, Joy in the Ordinary. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and they're the colours. So Walk the Dog. I want I want all the others. There's Coffee Break, Brunch Date, Delicious Sleep, Rainy Day, Walk the Dog, and Under the Shade. Oh, my God, I like Under the Shade. I think it's got a little goat. Yes, and you know I'm a goat person. So I need to get those others in this set because, oh, my God, I love them. And then you get this lovely... Leaflet of joy and goodness, isn't that beautiful? So I love Colourverse because they're fun and they're quirky and the bottles are cute. And you get stickers and I love their names. Especially names like Rainy Day and Goats Under the Trees. Not that it's called that. So that's, oh, and this is one of their big, the big packs. So this is in their um, 
Space Season 4, it was called Trailblazer in Space. And I'll just show you how they pack these. So you get a 65ml bottle and a 15ml bottle. And they do loads and loads of different um, series of these inks. But they did a moon landing one. Oh my god, they did a whole set. It was stunning. Um, so again, I put them back in the bottle. I've, I've used them. I love them. So when you open the box, you get, again, the gorgeous graphics. And then you get this little cardboard pen holder and stickers and information. And then you get a, in, a leaflet with all of the inks in it. And then you get this insert like that. And then here's the inks. And this is a little baby one. That one's Miss Baker, which is really yummy. And Abel. I think Abel was a monkey that went into space. And maybe Miss Baker was a cat. It tells you the story of it somewhere. I'll see if I can find it. But I just love their packaging. I did read the story of Abel and Miss Baker. I'm pretty sure that, um, it doesn't really tell you on here, but I must have looked it up. But there's some more of their things. And it doesn't tell you, you get in the thing, you just get the stickers, which I haven't used yet, and a little napkin. When you go to outer space and have like snacks, you've got a napkin and maybe it's to, to you know, mop up ink spills as well. So that is, and they're made in Korea. So this is Colorverse Able, they're all the Colorverse inks that I love and adore. Okay, I also have favourite brands because they make my favourite. So two brand, two colours that I absolutely adore are Private Reserve Arabian Rose, which I had a big accident with and spilt three quarters of the bottle, so I hope I can get another one. And Monteverde Rose Noir. That is one of my all-time favourite colour inks. It doesn't have um, anything on a bottle, just the, num the name. But, oh my God, it's a gorgeous colour. And I also like Noodlers because they do funky colours, big bottles, like that's a huge bottle. They're really well priced. So that's a three ounce bottle. Is it three ounce? Which I think is 75, I'm not sure, 75 mil, roughly. And this one is Cactus Fruit Eel. I've not got many because, again, shipping to, the, to New Zealand for ink is heavy. So, but I really, really, really love um, I love Cactus Fruit Eel, and I, the other one I've got is Apache Sunrise, which I love, and Black Swan in Australian Roses, which I also love. So those are, that's the other one. And then another one I really like, because when I was in the UK, it was really cheap and easy to get, because it's maybe it's Diamine or Diamine, or however you say it. And they do a lot of special edition colours, especially with Colt Pens, that are a great pen company that deliver worldwide um, and when I was in the UK, oh my God, it was so good. These were like three bucks a bottle, three pounds a bottle or something. This one's November Rain. That was a special edition one. Um, and they're all like, that one's got like hints of red and dark green. But the only trouble I have with them is nearly all of their special edition ones. This is one, there's a writer's group and they choose an ink each year or a couple. And this was one of them and it was Monbotto's Hat. And it's, it looks like it's going to be a nice purpley ink, but when you write with it, it's almost black. And this is, you get a little a thing about that there, which is kind of cool. And it's um, the Fountain Pens UK group. So it tells you about Mon... Lord Mon... Hang on, I have to read it, so I can't read it down there. Lord Monbotto was a Scottish writer who delved into evolutionary theory while teaching orangutans to play the flute. As far as we know, the latter-day purple ink enthusiast who goes by the nom de plume of Scribble Monbodo may or not, may not be a distant relation, but he definitely has a top hat in his splendid colour amid purple, veering towards the blue with a faint yellow sheen. The Fountain Pens UK community on Facebook selected this as one of their two choices from 10 diamine prototypes in an exercise coordinated by... Bernardo Games. The ink is recommended for pounding, pounding pens, which naturally run wet. 
So the other one was called something scribble. I think I'm not sure if I've got that one or not. But I may not have it. It's very, very similar though. But the only thing, as I said, they come out so dark. They're so saturated, their inks. And all of when you it's like the same, when you get a lot of ink reviews, you see these lovely swatches and they look amazing. But they're just as soon as you put them through the nib, they all look almost black. So yeah, that's um that's my only thing about D. I mean, I wish they did a lot of I, I I wish they did like brighter and paler ink so that I wish that Monbodo's hat wrote like it shows you on the label rather than I mean when I write with Rose Noir, that's what colour comes out of the nib. But when I write with this, the colour that comes out of the nib is more like you can't hardly differentiate from black. And the other thing I like about them is they're shimmer inks. I'm not a real shimmer ink lover because they're a bit of a pain, but they do make nice bottles and it's lovely at Christmas. So again, another, just the thing about inks and pens, the graphics, the talent. I love all of the art. This one's one of my favourites of theirs, the Golden Ivy. It's beautiful for Christmas cards. And that does come out a lovely golden green. It does actually come out pretty much that colour and you get the gold shimmer. So that's the ink question addressed. My crab is losing his grip. I'll put the crab there for Jamie, who loves my crab when he does his doo 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 his pink panther walk. Okay, next question. Oh, I also like Robert Oster ink. They have some incredible colours and they're made in Australia, so not so far to come. Question number two. Oh my God, I took a long time with that one. Do you, how many pen pals do you have? Well, I didn't really used to have any. I had lots when I was younger. I was a, an obsessive um, pen paler and writer and blah, blah, blah. I wrote loads of letters, decorated envelopes long before it was a thing. I was into mail art and, but I had two pen pals, and then a couple of years ago, I started doing Inco Rimo, which is International Correspondence Month, and it's in February. So last year, I think I got four more, like, long-term, like, permanent, we're still corresponding pen pals. No, yeah, last year. And this year, I seem to have gained a few more. So this wallet here is full of, I sent 28 letters in February this year. But these are all um, pen pal things that I have got to answer. Some from Inco Rimo. And I've also started doing post crossing. And I got my first post crossing card the other day, which was beautiful. I don't know what I've done with it. Um, but it was from Japan, and I only just started doing that. So that's online. It's um, I'll, I'll write the link. When you send postcards and you register and you register and you get an ID and you get send two postcards or three or whatever and then you wait until you get them back and you register them up. So it's and it tells you how many miles the postcard has crossed and how long it's taken it to get to you and it's just a lot of fun. And then you can get all the postcards and paper and warm with them or something. But it's I just love mail art. I really love mail art and I do think the mailbox is a museum and a gallery and. Everyone should send bright, fun, colourful mail. So that's my pen pal question. Question number three, are you all done buying fountain pens? No, I'm not. Um, I started buying them years ago when I was a kid. Well, I didn't only had a couple. But then I found out it was back in vogue and... Um, I couldn't find my old Schaefer fountain pens I had in the park as I couldn't get the cartridges locally. So I found out that there was a a, a couple of pens um, I found was Alami. This was a few years ago, Safari. And then the Pilot Metropolitan, which is this one. Um, that Crab is looking after. And the Alami Safari... This I just had this one, and then they started bringing out all these special editions. Well, they've been bringing them out for years, but not really in New Zealand. Then a few years ago, I got a Lamy All Star. Um, I think I prefer this. the All Stars are really easy to damage. They're like aluminium, but um, anyway, I found out about the Safari, and then I discovered because they sold them locally. 
And then, I don't know, I went online and discovered a whole thing. But that's, I think, the next question. So, no, I'm certainly not done buying fountain pens. I definitely want to get some more more pens, because that, that comes up again in another question. How many people have you spread the fountain pen hobby to? I don't know. I mean, I do Instagram posts, and I know noticed that a few people are posting about in my in my little community started doing fountain pen posts and um i bought my daughter a beautiful um that was a lamy lx luxurious rose gold pen because she loves rose gold um and everyone who knows me like i have two friends who like fountain pens two guys um who both use fountain pens and i don't need to really explain it to them but one, and one of them who I call my brother, he really is into all the inks. He saw me do um, 30 inks in 30 days a couple of years ago, and he really was, where'd you get all those inks? So, But I don't know if I've actually infected anyone um, with my enthusiasm or not. Um, I don't think any of us do, really. I tried hard with my sister. I fixed up one of mum's old pens when I was over there clearing her house out with my sister. So, you know, who knows? Number five, who brought you into the hobby? Who introduced you? My mum. My mum always had beautiful handwriting, an amazing craftswoman. She was beautiful. Everything she did was so neat and perfect, and her handwriting was stunning. Um, and she used to write with the, I think she had Parker and Schaefer fountain pens. And when I passed my 11 plus, she bought me a fountain pen when I was 10 which was a UK thing, if you decide if you go to grammar school or comprehensive school. And it used to be a thing then that you got a fountain pen. So she bought me that. I think I've left his little lid out. Um, and I think that was a Parker. And then um, maybe a couple of Christmases later, I got some Shaper pens, which were not quite sure where they are at the moment, but they were fun. I might have left them in England. They were... Um, really cool actually and it was then i then i only had those and then a lot of stuff got left behind when i moved over here before i got my stuff from england so i got a lamy safari or well, that this one here this vista because i like the demonstrator i've never had a clear pen before so that was quite a few years ago um and then i just then i somehow i'm trying to think how it was i found out I stumbled into um, finding out that fountain pens were a thing online. I think I was looking for refills for my Schaefer or something. I discovered Goulet pens and I discovered the whole YouTube community um, of fountain pens. And then it was like, oh, my God. And then I went on Instagram, which I was already on, and did fountain pen tags. And I saw a picture of this pen. This was about three or four years ago. And I had to have it. And it was discontinued, but I fell in love with it, like totally in love with it. And it was, um, I'll show you the pen. It was, it's Italian pen and it's called a Delta Journal. And it is this pen. And I absolutely adored it. It's so, it looks like, to me, it looks like Christmas and ivy. And, and it's got a beautiful, big, chunky, gorgeous nib. It writes like a dream. And I really, really love it. So I tracked it down. And I think I found it from someone called Peyton Pens in America. And it was the only one they had, so I got that through a friend of mine because they didn't ship to New Zealand, and I sent it to New York, to my friend in New York. Said friend actually introduced me to Twisby pens, which I have quite a few of now. Um, thanks, Bren. And so, yeah. And now, when I went to the UK last year, I bought a pen. I bought a Visconti Rembrandt in a beautiful pen shop in Bury St Edmunds, which... That remains of one of my, my great days of my life, going into a, a pen shop. I hadn't been in a, into a pen shop for years and years and years, but I remembered there used to be a shop there. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's kind of snowballed from there. So it was my mommy who got me really excited about it. But the all of the YouTube community continued to feed that excitement. People like Chris and Stephen Brown and his amazing, beautiful, stunning, inspiring wife, Aziza, of Gourmet Pens. Oh, I love those people. Stephen Brown's amazing. And he does Clive and Norbert on um, and does all this amazing stuff on stoicism. And he has an Instagram channel 
with Clive and Norbert, and he does all these things about the brain and how it works, and they're just brilliant, microorganisms and all that stuff. I love crazy, passionate, wonderful people. Okay, so that was question five. Question six. Favourite paper or notebook? Right, well, I think ultimately my favourite paper, my favourite notebook, so these ones I make myself that I put in my journals, in my Fodori. These are just standard traveller's notebook size inserts and I make them with different covers and then I collect them up and I make them out of this paper, which is Tomoy River. Um, 52 grams this one is and I get that from Goulet pens and so you get 100 sheets loose sheets of A4 and I cut them down um, so and that paper is amazing I mean it's just gorgeous it's really thin but nothing shows through it I mean anyone who's into pens will know that Tomoy River paper is just incredible and again, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's just so, it's really thin, but you can't, it, pretty much every pen I've got will not bleed through or hardly ghost. It's just amazing paper. So that's Tomoy River. And I think it's the paper they put in those Hobonichi things. I've never had a Hobonichi, but I think that's what goes in those. So there's a Christmassy um, insert I made. But, so that's my favourite paper. But I also love these little... Um, Claire Fontaine notebooks, that one I got in England, and I use that for in nothing, putting what's in my pens and stuff. And these ones you can get with their special little switch. These are from Goulet pens, but it's uh, the Claire Fontaine paper. So they're made by Claire Fontaine. And I sometimes buy Claire Fontaine big notebooks when they're on sale because you can get them here um, and just tear the pages out and use them for pen pal letters. And one thing I've just discovered in New Zealand, this place had a sale and they were selling these for half price. Now, this is the Life Notebook. And, oh, my God, this paper, it is like the most smoothest, softest paper you ever saw. And it's amazing for fountain pens. It's kind of, I've also got Rhodia, but I don't really like Rhodia. It's too, a bit too slick, I don't know. But this is like a cross between Tomo River and Rhodia. But it's smoother and maybe clear contact. I don't know. It's just gorgeous. Um, but they're made in Japan, like most of the good paper is. So if you can get hold of life and try it, oh my god, it is so amazing. I love, love, love it. Oh, and journal. This one is from Franklin Christoph. This is I'm a vegan, as you know, probably. So this is not leather. But it's so, it's this kind of waxed, like, I'm not sure what it is actually. I can't remember, canvasy stuff. And, oh my God, I love it. And they also make inserts. These are their inserts. And this paper's made from sugar cane. And that's also amazing for fountain pens. So I use this too, and I really like this paper. Um, but I love Franklin Crystal. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... I'm trying to find a page that I've written on, see if I can show you. Um, I can't see, it doesn't, there's, that's, you can't really see any thing. So that, and this journal, oh my God, I just love this. They're on their, um, their website, the Fodori. I call them Fodoris because they're like traveller's notebook size, but they're not made out of leather. And I make my own, and I have a, about three three different ones now. Not from all from Franklin Christoph. I've got one from them, but I've also got homemade ones and other ones. So journals done. Tick check. What are we up to now? Favorite paper notebook. Have you ever thought about getting rid of all your pens? No, not really. I couldn't. I don't like biros, and I like pencils. Got some really cool pencil quotes on, but you've got to sharpen them, and then they can get messy. I know ink can, but no. Sometimes when I'm really down, I wake up. Because as you know, I collect tarot cards too. And I think, right, that's it. What's the point? What's the point in having all these tarot cards? What's the point in having all these pens? It's all going. I'm going to run away and leave it all behind. But that's more like getting rid of everything. Um, when the black dog gets a bit too heavy and, you know, 
So I talk myself out of it. It's not too difficult. Sometimes it's harder than other times. But it's, you know, those days, like, um, we get those days, don't we? I know Aziza posted a quote on um, her Instagram the other day, and it was talking about bravery, and it was by Rachel, Dr. Rachel Milner. And she said, um, it was something like, sometimes bravery is doing something new or daring, and sometimes bravery is just sitting up in bed in the morning or waking up and sitting up in bed in the morning. It's so true. So, yes. And that brings me perfectly on to my next question, which is... Um, if you could go to any pen show in the world, where would you go? And I would go to one in Canada, and the only one I found, and I don't even know if it runs anymore with COVID or whatever, is called Scriptus, and it's in Toronto. And I would go there because I could meet Aziza and SBRE Brown, her husband, and I always wanted to go to Canada. That was easy one to answer. Question, I think that was number eight. Question number nine. Or number eight, I don't know, I'm getting mixed up now. Which famous pen fountain pen person would you like to meet? Aziza, gourmet pens, and her husband as well. Could tag along. You know, I'd be quite happy with that. Oh my god, those two, I love them. I'm gonna link their channels and oh my god, I love them so much. They just and Aziza is amazing. She does beautiful ink spots and stuff, and she's so real. I just love her. And she's gorgeous and she's got, and they're just such an incredible, amazing couple. And they moved from Holland to Canada and, oh, I love them. So that was so easy to answer. Um, I'd like to meet other people too. I'd like to meet Chris and I don't know. Oh, I'd like to meet um, Drew from Goulet Pens. I can't, he's he's kind of cool. The like Brian's sidekick. <laughs> I don't know, I really don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's the pen people. Okay, how many fountain pens would you like to own? Well, I'm kind of happy with my ones, but I actually really want 49 Franklin Christoph pens because then I'll get a free 50th pen and it'll be a big celebration and they'll make me a special pen of my choice with my name engraved on it. But I've got a long way to go because I've only got three. But I love Franklin Christoph pins. This one is a, I can never, I think this is a model 45. I can't read it in this light. And it's called Sex and Candy. This is one I fell in love with and then it went out of stock and they brought it back. They have an amazing choice of nibs and they all, they come in these beautiful little pouches, which are, are so awesome and cool. And... I've also got, oh, this is the first one I bought, and this is called Winter Pine, and I bought this because Aziza put it on her channel, and I ordered it straight away, because I fell in love with it, because I love anything winter, you know that, and I like pine trees, and even when I look at it, I smell pine, and it's got a beautiful, big nib, and I think this is a 45L, this one, the other one's a 45 and then I have this, um, I can't remember that, per, per, oh, what's it called, purple room, anyway, I can't remember what that one is. I think this is a Model 46. I might be getting these completely wrong, the model numbers. I should, look, you get nice little cards. I'll look at, I'll do a Frank and Christoph video at some point because I love them. I love their pens and they all write like a dream. One nib I had that I didn't like too much because it was an italic one and I'm, it, I don't know, I didn't like the sharp edge, but I'll get used to it. But you can buy all their nib, you can buy nib units separately and I want to try a music nib. So I definitely haven't given up buying pens, absolutely not. And I want 49 Franklin Christophs if that answers that question, which means I need to get another 46 and then I get my free one. And every time something really beautiful comes out, like the purple Twisby or whatever. I mean, I don't go on holidays. I don't go anywhere. I don't buy clothes. I don't wear makeup. I don't go out, you know. So I'll get my jewelry where I can. If it means ordering pens in the mail, then I'm going to do it. Screw it. But I don't, you know, I don't really... I'm much more discerning then. When I was in England and they, all these cheap pens, like I've got some 
awesome. When I was learning to play with nibs, I bought these awesome pens on eBay. Like, I don't know what even make they were. But you got like 10 pens for like $12 and you could just play with the nibs and make them different shapes. And so I started doing that. I haven't actually got a Dremel yet or anything like attached to nib that way, but I've done lots of stuff with nail files. And um, so I have a lot of very cheap pens, um, which, you know, I'm not really bothered about those. They don't, but I don't have many really good pens. I've got two sailors, one I don't like. Um, Three Thrank and Kristoff, my Delta Journal, and a, two Viscontis. But on the whole, most of my pens are like, you know, the $30 range or, le or a lot less. Okay, so Frank and Kristoff. Your fave pen case or sleeve is this one. And I think it's called My Blind Valentine, and it's by a company called Yenderings, which I think are no longer a thing because I've been trying to find them because I wanted another one of their pen cases, and I can't find them anymore. So I'm quite sad about that, but it's um, it's beautiful. It's got a pocket on the back, and it's this lovely velvet inlay material, and it's got the flap. And then it holds six pens and you can put something in the pack. You probably put more in the back. And it's so soft and gorgeous. And a lot of pen cases are leather and I don't like leather. So this is the Delta Journal. And the other one is my, oh, it's the one of my two sailors. I think this one was called Hawaiian Wright. And that is a stunning writer. I love that pen. The other one I don't like. I got the wrong colour and I couldn't change it and it's pink and I don't like it. But I write with it. So that's, I love this pen case and I wish I could get another one. And the I like the pen, crystal pen cases because they come with gorgeous pens inside. And the other, this was, this is, um this is a very cool little kimono pen case. It looks just like a kimono, look at it. And it's from Pen BBS and it's got the, I didn't know I was going to get this with the pen. I ordered a pen from them because <laughs> you'll see why. And they're on Etsy and their pens are very inexpensive. So you unwind that and then you squidge up. I think it looks like it was made out of a tie or something, but it's very cool. And look at the pen. It's the Winter Icy Snowflake pen. And so I keep it in this little case it came with. And it's got a beautiful nib and it's actually got snowflakes on the nib so of course you know had to get that and so i love that pen case i like it a lot and it's cute because you can just put one pen in your bag if you can restrain yourself like that and then twizzle it up and put its little dipper through and there you go okay next question oh i think i skipped the pen show i think i did the pen show ahead of time so it doesn't matter. I think I've answered them all. Oh, how much space do you dedicate to the hobby? Um, well, I've got a, a little cupboard in the other room, a little chest thing that's got my inks and stuff in and boxes underneath that have got pen boxes in because I've got the boxes in case I sell them or anything, but mainly they're only like Twisby and Lamy. And, um, but I mean... I lie awake at night, using up dream space, thinking about pens sometimes. Um, usually I have about six pens on one, on the other side, unoccupied side of my bed. And they're all, all around the place. So I don't actually have this set organized thing. Um, so, you know, it's like when you make a cake with like currants and spices in and the currants like don't take up a certain, they take up, they just mix through the cake. Kind of like that, because everything in my life seems to blend into into one. <laughs> so I don't really have a set space apart from the place where I keep my inks or try to keep my inks together. I'm really bad at keeping anything together. Like, I'm just so disorganised. My tarot cards, I have a cupboard for them because I just had to, but they leak all over the place. And I think I've answered all the questions now. I'm just going to go through them and double check. So, favourite ink brand? Yes. Pen pals? Yes. Am I done? Yes. 
um, spread the fountain pen, brought you into the hobby, so that's five. Six was favorite paper. Seven was favorite person. Um, how many fountain pens? Eight. Five pen case, nine. Pen show, ten. How much do you... Oh, I've lost a question somewhere. I can't find it. Oh, I've ever thought of getting rid of all my pens. One, two, three, four, five. I'm sure we have a 12 questions. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I think I've done them all. So there we go. And I want to thank Chris for the fun tag. And I've taken up way too much time of your time. So thank you for watching. And... Hopefully I'll see you again soon and here he goes, Krabby. Boom, 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 boom.